Hello guys, at the first part of this lesson, we are going to create the checkout page. So when inside the cart page, you click on the proxy to checkout, you are going to see this page that we have the name of the user, shipping address of the food and order items. Watch this video to the end if you like to know how. Okay, here is the roadmap for this lesson. Here, the first thing that I wanna do is creating the order model. We need it because we need to convert our cart model into order model because order model has some additional properties that is related to the order. So we need to go to the explorer and inside the front end SRC app shared folder, right click on the models and create a new file. Set its name to order.ts and here write export class order. Its first property is ID required with the type of number. Items is the second one and its type is cart item array, just like the cart. So we are not going to create the cart item once again for the order. So we just need to set the cart items of the cart to the cart items of the order. That's it. It is not imported here. Press control dot and add import here. Next field is total price that is mandatory with the type of number name that is mandatory with the type of string address required with the type of string payment ID that we save the payment ID from the PayPal inside it. It is required with the type of string. We want to show where it is created. So we add a created at that is required with the type of string and a status that keeps the status of the order. It is paid, it is canceled, and all the statuses could be current status of the order. Its type is a string and it is required. Okay, our order is ready for this lesson. Close it and let's go for the next step that is generating the checkout page component. And just like before, we'll go to the terminal menu and select new terminal. And here, first of all, we need to go to the front end folder and we need to write NGGC for generating the component inside components folder, pages folder with the name of checkout dash page. Then press enter. Here we go. Our checkout page component is generated. So let's close the terminal and get into its TypeScript file. So here inside the components folder, pages folder, open checkout page folder and select checkout page component TypeScript file. Here at the top, we need to define the order field. So write order with the type of order that we defined earlier that is equal to new order. Okay, before finishing this component, I want to add it to the router. So let's go to the explorer and select app routing module Duplicate the last item here, change its path to checkout and its component to checkout page component. It is successfully imported here, very good. So we have the route that we want. Let's check it inside the browser. Go to the cart page and click on this proceed to checkout. As you can see, we have checkout page works. Now let's get back and continue working on the checkout page component. So close app routing module. And here for the second field, I want to add checkout form that is required. Its type is form group and boom. Here inside the constructor, we need to inject several things. First thing is cart service with the type of cart service. The second one is private form builder for building the form group with the type of form builder. The third one is private user service with the type of user service. We want the user service to have the default name and address of the user. And the last item here is toast R service with the type of toast R service. Now here inside the constructor, we need to get the cart from the cart service and set it to the order. So let's write const cart is equal to cart service 
dot get cart but the get cart is not available inside the cart service because it is get cart observable sometimes you don't want to work with the observables you just want the latest value of that observable now here the easiest thing that we can do is going to the cart service so from the explorer services click on cart service and here after the get cart observable let's write get cart with the type of cart here return this dot cart subject dot value as i told you before the subject always keep the latest value so by using subject dot value we can get the latest value of our subject so we don't need to work with observable when we want only the latest value let's close the cart service now here there is no error and we have our cart now let's set this dot order dot items equal to cart dot items and this dot order dot total price equal to cart dot total price. Okay, we have the cart items and the cart total price. So let's go inside the ng on init for creating the form. But initial value of the form shouldn't be empty because we have the name and the address of the user. So let's get it from the current user and put it inside the form as the initial value. So let's write let name and address that is equal to this dot user service dot current user. Just like the cart service, we don't have current user. We just have user observable. So we need to add it to the user service. So hold the control down in Windows and the command in Mac OS and click on user service. In this way, the user service file will be open for you. And here before the login, create a public member that is a getter with the name of current user. Its return type is a user and it returns this dot user subject dot value. So by using the current user, we are going to have the latest value of the user subject that is in fact behavior subject. Okay, close the user service and here we go. No error again. Now we can fill this checkout form using the form builder. So write this dot checkout form equal to this dot form builder dot group its first form control is name its initial value is name it's coming from here from the current user and it needs validators so we import it dot required the second form control is address with the default value of address coming from the user and its validator is required too okay just like before let's create a shorthand for this checkout form controls okay get fc that will return this dot checkout form dot controls once again we use it for having easy access to the checkout form controls and the last method that we need here is create order at the beginning of it we check if this dot checkout form is invalid so when the form is invalid we shouldn't let it go down but before that we need to show a warning message so this dot toast our service dot warning with the text of please fill the inputs with the title of invalid inputs after it we need to return out of the method so now if you write something here it means the checkout form is valid when the checkout form is valid we need to set its values to the order so this.order.name will be this.fc.name.value and this.order.address will be equal to this.fc.address.value so we are setting the values from the form to the order that we want to send to the server for creation but in this part of this lesson we are not going through the order creation process in the backend so we just use console.log this.order to make sure that the order has the correct value coming from the checkout form okay the typescript part of the checkout page component is finished let's click here and click on checkout page component HTML file. Clear everything here. And here we want to create the appearance of the checkout page component. First of all, let's add a div 
with a class of container and another div with a class of content. Here, first of all, we need to use app title for showing the title of the page. Its title is order form and its font size is 1.6 RAM. Now it's time for adding the form. So let's use form tag with the form group of checkout form. Let's use our text input component with the control of fc.name and with the label of name. Okay, let's duplicate this text input. And for the second input, we need to use address with the label of address. Here we go. The form is ready. Let's go inside the browser and see the result. Let's go to the cart page. Let's click on the proceed to checkout. And as you can see, we have the current user's name and current user's address inside these two inputs. And since we don't have show errors when condition, if we clear the text, we will see the error even if no submit button is clicked. At this point, we want to show the list of order items here. Since I want to use the order items in several places in the future, I want to create a component for it. So let's go and do that. Open up the terminal, go to the front end folder and write NGGC for generating your component inside components folder, partials folder with the name of order items list. Then press enter. Okay, close the terminal and let's go to the explorer inside the partials folder. Open up the order item list. Here we go. We have them here. Click on the TypeScript file. Here we don't have something special. We just need an order that is required with the type of order and it is an input. So we need to pass the order wherever we want to use it. Our job is done. Let's click over here and open up order items list component. Clear everything here and create a simple HTML table here. For the first TR, I want to use a TD with the color span of five. So it takes the whole row with an H3 tag with the text of order items. This TR works as header. The second TR should be a loop for the order items. So use ng4 let item of order.items. The first TD should be an A tag with the router link to the food slash item dot food dot ID. And inside this A tag, I want to show the image of the food with the SRC of item dot food dot image URL. Second TD is item dot food dot name. Next TD is for the price. So item dot food dot price. Oh, don't forget to set the currency pipe for the price. Next TD is for quantity. So item.quantity. And the last TD is for item.price with the pipe of currency. This price is for a single food. And this item price is this food price multiplied by the quantity. So if the food price is $10 and the quantity is two, the item price will be $20. Now let's go to the TypeScript file and change this selector from app dash order items list to just order items list. And let's use it inside the checkout page component. So here after the form, let's use order items list. And we need to pass the order here to this component. Now we can see it inside the browser. As you can see, we have the order items here with the title of order items and the order items details that you can see. But at the bottom of this order items list component, I want to show the total price of the order. Let's add it inside it. Inside the order items list component, inside the table, let's add another TR. I want to show it on the right side. So I want to add a TD with call a span of three. So we are going to make three empty TDs and we are going to add another TD for showing a bold total text. So we use a strong tag with the text of total. And we use another TD with a strong tag for showing orders total price with the pipe of currency. Now if we look at to the browser and we scroll down, we can see that we have total of $31. But as you can see, the images are very big. Let's do something on its CSS file and make it beautiful. 
So click here and select the order items list component CSS file. For the table, I want its width to be 100%. It should have a border of one pixel. It is solid with the color of hashtag E E E E. It should have a margin top of one rem and border radius that is five pixel. Its padding should be 0.5 RAM from top and bottom and 1 RAM from left and right. Next thing that we need to work on is H3. Its margin top 0.5 RAM and its margin left is 0.3 RAM. As you know, there is no difference between putting the zero before the dot or not putting it. But for having a consistent format, I'm going to do that. Its color should be gray. For the hover effect of the A tag, its opacity should be 0.9, TD's height should be 3 RAM, and the image inside the TD should have a width of 3 RAM, height of 3 RAM, its object fit should be cover, so it should be cropped, and it should be round shape, so we set the border radius to 100 RAM. Now let's look at the, the browser. As you can see, it is much more beautiful. I know it is so huge, but when we are working to the checkout page CSS file, we are going to make it smaller. At this step, I want to add a section for showing the map. So the user can choose the shipping address on the map. But we are not going through the process of adding the map here because it is a complete separated part. We are going to do it on the next parts of this lesson. Let's go and add its section. Let's close the order items list, CSS and HTML and TypeScript. And here after the content div, let's add another div with a class of map. And let's use app title component for its title with the title of choose your address on map and with the font size of 1.6 RAM. On the next part, we are going to add actual map components here. But for now, we are going to keep it empty. The next div that I want to add here is a div with a class of buttons container and another div inside it with the class of buttons and a button inside it with the click event of create order with the text of go to payment. Normally, after clicking on the go to payment button, we are going to create the order for the payment. OK, our HTML file is ready. Let's check out the browser. Here we go. We have everything prepared for the checkout page CSS file. Let's get back to the code and click here and select checkout page components CSS file. For its container, I want a margin top of one RAM. Its display should be flex, margin should be zero from the top, two RAM from the right, six RAM from the bottom, and two RAM from the left. Flex wrap should be wrap, and justify content should be center. So the items will be put on the center horizontally. For the content class, we are going to set a limited width of 35 RAM, and we are going to set a margin right of 3 RAM. This is specifically for the content class, but for the content class and form at the same time, the display should be flex and the flex direction should be column. For the form specifically, the width should be 100%. For the buttons container class, we are going to have a flex basis of 100%. Display of flex and justify content of center. For the buttons class, margin should be 2 RAM and width should be 35 RAM. For the button tag, its color should be white. Its background color should be hashtag E72929. Its width should be 100%. Height, 3 RAM. Opacity 0.8, font size should be 1.3 RAM, border none, and border radius 0.5 RAM. And I want to give it a box shadow to make it beautiful. 2 pixel, 2 pixel, 2 pixel, 2 pixel, and the color of gray. For the button tag hover effect, let's set its opacity to 1. 
and cursor to pointer. Now let's check out the result. As you can see, we have this beautiful checkout page. Now for testing this button's functionality, let's right click and select inspect. Let's go to the console, clear everything and click on go to payment. As you can see, we have an order. Its name is the same name as here. And the address is the same. Now let's test if it's using the text values. So I'm going to write test at the end of the name and test at the end of the address. Let's click on the go to payment. As you can see, now the name has a test at the end of it and the address too. Okay, this was for this lesson. On the next lesson, we are going to implement this mini map here so the user can select the address on the map. You've been watching Code with Nasir and I hope to see you next time.